Hey everybody, this is your daily dose of all things royal. Coming December 31st, as if we weren't irritated enough, Netflix drops this on us. Take one. At every turn in my life, I thought, do I really want this? And if the answer is yes, you find a way. The most self-entitled ex-royal and his harpy are back at it again. This was inspired by Nelson Mandela. In other words, copied, because these two don't have an original thought in their head. God, please make this stop. I can't take it anymore. I just can't. I can't. Stop. It is what difference we have made to the lives of others that will determine the significance of the life we lead. Netflix just dropped this. Another series of social justice warriors featuring Harry and Meghan coming December 31st. I officially have canceled my Netflix subscription. I can't take this. I just I can't do it. Any series that comes out, I will buy on Amazon Prime. I don't care if I have to wait months and months and months. I've had enough. I've absolutely had enough with this. Jesus, please take the wheel on this one. We're really asking for your help on saving the world on the destruction of these two. So Netflix is dropping a new series on December 31st called Live to Lead, in which not only Meghan and Harry are riding off the backs of dead people like Nelson Mandela and Ruth Bader Ginsburg, but they've also brought in some of their woke friends, such as Greta Thunberg, Jacinda Ardern, you know, the one that wants to have censorship in New Zealand. Yeah, that one. Glow Steinem, you know, Meg's best friend. Mainly means by example. We do what we see way, way, way more than what we're told. In addition to the Queen's legacy, why not ruin Nelson Mandela's legacy as well as Ruth Bader Ginsburg with these two idiots? Honestly, Netflix, stop it. As leaders, we have the keys to create a sense of security and a sense of hope. To also be important in understanding more about mis- and disinformation online, a challenge that we must, as leaders, address. Sadly, I think it's easy to dismiss this problem as one in the margins. I can certainly understand the desire to leave it to someone else. As leaders, we're rightly concerned that even the most light-touch approaches to disinformation could be misinterpreted as being hostile to the values of free speech that we value so highly. She glosses over how any restrictions on speech and communication would impact our ability to discuss issues freely. And who exactly is deciding what is true and what is false? Politicians? Do you trust politicians to make that call? Do you trust anyone to make that call? The sort of authoritarian-minded people who tend to desire that level of control over speech are the very last people you would want making the decisions. And we know this because of the inflammatory language Ardern uses to sell her idea to the world. How do you ensure the human rights of others are upheld when they are subjected to hateful and dangerous rhetoric and ideology? The weapons may be different, but the goals of those who perpetuate them is often the same. To cause chaos and reduce the ability of others to defend themselves, to disband communities, to collapse the collective strength of countries who work together. And what have Harry and Meghan been doing in their reality show? Pretty much exactly that, trying to cause disruption within the Commonwealth and take down an institution that they no longer are a part of because they're jealous. And they're openly aligning with people such as this here to destroy and take away people's freedoms because they're so hung up in having power over others. Tyranny has had a makeover. It's no longer a boot stamping on a human face forever. It isn't a gruff, gurning cop dragging you into a cell for thinking or expressing a dangerous idea. It isn't a priest strapping you to a breaking wheel. No, authoritarianism is well-dressed now. It's polite. It has a broad smile and it speaks in a soft voice. It is delivered not via a soldier's boot to the cranium, but with a caring liberal head tilt. And giving inspiration to the rest of us to live, to lead. Harry and Meghan once again forcing this shit down our throats, trying to show the world that they are some kind of global leaders and voices for all the social injustice of the world. So now they're 
I don't even know what their participation is aside from jumping on this series to get credit by sanctimoniously narrating, encouraging everyone to be social justice warriors. I hate saying it, but none of this is motivational. When you look at this trailer, there's nothing inspiring of it because you know some of the people that are backing it, like Meghan and Harry, are complete frauds. There's literally no end in sight with these two. It's just one thing after another thing after another thing. And it's like Chinese water torture, where you're constantly being hosed in the face with these two, that you're just ready to say, you know what? I'll surrender everything. I'll give up everything. Whatever you say, just shut up. Ten days after this releases, then we've got this stupid book. These woke, high IQ stupid people, they're easy to recognize. They hate George Washington. They hate Thomas Jefferson. They hate Dr. Zeus and they hate Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> the, these woke, high IQ stupid people, they walk around, they walk around with Ziploc bags of kale <laughs> that they can eat to give them energy. Now, if you want to eat kale, that's up to you. I don't eat kale. Do you know why? Because kale tastes to me like I'd rather be fat. <laughs> and these high IQ pe stupid people, the wokers in charge in Washington, D.C., the berserk wing of the Democratic Party, they hyperventilate on their yoga mats if, if you use the wrong pronoun. And to become leaders. Shut up, Meg. It was such a fraud. <laughs>